G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday evening here in Australia and the market has gone up a little bit but Bitcoin is really kind of stuck around that 50 day moving average at the moment. Now look, it's great for altcoins, they're still raging and I mean Dogecoin. <laughs> I've got a crazy Dogecoin story coming up but yeah, you can see it's basically still a sea of green. Bitcoin dominance getting down to 43%. This is really... Yeah, next level, it is yeah, full on up there. I mean, ETH dominance rising to 16% and gas prices still just sitting and hovering around sort of 40, I should say. They've been a little bit higher and a little bit lower, but you know, at least they're camped around there. That's, that's great for the space in general. But I've got some really interesting stories, but let's have a look uh, at how the market's doing uh, and then the Bitcoin chart as we normally do before we move on. All right, as you can see, look, I see a green. Things are looking pretty good. But what's done really well in the last 24 hours? We can see Dogecoin right there. Good Lord. Ethereum Classic, what? 43%. Telecoin, 44%. Dogecoin, 33%. Chainlink, 24%. Dash, 20%. Litecoin, 16%. EOS, 15%. Bitcoin Cash. I mean, you know, these gains are just crazy and so many of them again the 15 percent and upwards and even ones that are just close i mean yeah that's crazy but again bitcoin has kind of really retraced so look we've got you know pretty much a sea of green has anything not fared so well is there anything that's you know kind of got smacked around a bit in the last 24 hours in the top 100 at least anyway celsius networks down a little bit but again you know nothing goes up forever OKB, okay, it's still up 100% in seven days. Uh, look, you know, there's definitely some losses there, but no major ones. I mean, the biggest one is kind of 8%, but Waves is still up nearly 80% after losing 8% in the last 24 hours. So the losses are fairly minor and the gains are fairly substantial at the moment. But let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart because this has me, again, a little bit worried, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you know I'm a bit cautious and a bit of a nervous Nelly. I don't like to be that, but that's how I have been. But something interesting that I'm seeing is really since sort of here, Bitcoin's been ranging. So we're going back to the 21st of February. It's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up. And it looks like it's coming down a little bit. But look... What I spoke about, the 50-day moving average is actually resistance at the moment. So we're really finding it hard to get above that. But so far, the 100-day moving average is holding as support. But look, in the next sort of, well, what do we got here? So it's 8 in the morning over there, so we still got a fair while. But look, really in the next day or two, I guess we'll sort of see. I mean, this day has still got plenty of hours left in it. So is this going to be a green candle or a red candle that, you know, sort of comes down and touches this 100-day moving average? Or is what I said could possibly happen where we go down, hit a low, come up, roll over and start to go lower again? Really, this, you know, green area for me, this is where I think the buying opportunity is. If it can get down that low, you know, again, I never offer financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. But I'd kind of be jumping all over Bitcoin if it got down into here. But I wouldn't throw everything I have at it. No more than probably half. So if you've got $100 to invest and Bitcoin gets down to in this green range, you know, whether you jump in straight at sort of 46000 or wait till it gets, you know, down around the kind of forty-one, forty-two thousand dollars $42,000 level. For me, again, not financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. If I've got $100, I put $50 in. And then I'll wait. I wait to see if it goes lower because if it goes lower then I can buy another fifty dollars worth of it at a lower price and again this really is the key support I think if Bitcoin gets you know like full closes below the 200 day moving average we're probably in trouble and the next bear markets already started look can it have a small close below it for like a day maybe yep and definitely even you know wick down quite for far under it that's just normal for a bull cycle. That's what it's done a number of times throughout bull cycles. So that is a possibility. I just think the buying pressure is still going to be too much. I don't think we're going to get any lower than this green box. But again, that's not financial advice. I've been wrong before and I'll definitely be wrong again. I don't claim to know it all. But I'm just looking at the moment and that 50-day moving average is resistance. 
we can't get above it at the moment. We've kind of wicked above it and pushed above it, but we basically end up back on it and now we're stuck below it. But again, I said this the other day, could Bitcoin just range until the 100 catches up with the 50 day and then push us real high to the next, you know, sort of barrier, whatever that may be, excuse me. Sure, or it could push us lower and we have to come back down and retest some of these levels. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. And there is a story about, you know, what sort of might have pushed the Bitcoin price lower. But look, it's been stuck under the 50 day moving average for a while. So this story that I'll get to, I don't think really explains everything. It just explains maybe a small fraction of it. So that's what I'm looking for. So the buying opportunity for me in Bitcoin is under sort of 46,000 and down to around about 41,000. That's where I'd definitely be trying to get some if it goes down that low. But I'm not throwing everything I have at it in case it goes lower and particularly getting down towards this 200 day moving average. And again, if we have like at least two days that close below the 200 day moving average and they get lower each time, I would probably think that we're in the next bear market. And now for me, I don't just panic sell everything. I simply hold my Bitcoin and buy more of it, but I may sell some of my altcoins if we start to get down to here. I'll have already lost a lot, but if Bitcoin goes much lower, I could possibly lose a whole more. And again, look, that may even change depending on certain things. Really, if I see Bitcoin starting to get down to here, you know, hopefully I'll have taken uh, some profits from my altcoins already. But again, we'll have to wait and see. This cycle is definitely not playing out like previous cycles, but it's not completely dissimilar either. So yeah, we're still waiting for confirmation on where the market's going to go because again, really, we've been ranging since way back here. The 21st of Feb is just you know, kind of creeping. It is still sort of slowly getting higher though until this point, but now we've got to wait and see, can this kind of 100 day moving average hold and push up? Because if we go below the 100 day moving average, I am, I'm not getting worried, worried, but I'm definitely thinking right here, oh, this is probably going to be a bigger correction. Because I mean, look, from our peak, we've already done a 30% drop. Let's have a look what happens if we go from here down to here. I mean, that's a 36% drop when we get down to the bottom of my green box here. We get down to the 200 day moving average at the moment. Whew, that's a 40% drop. That is really starting to hurt. But again, it doesn't mean I panic and sell everything. For me, I already know after, you know, previous experiences, if I've kind of missed it and haven't taken profits here. I'm just simply going to hold. I don't really have a whole lot more to lose by then. And again, from holding in 2017, from the peak all the way through to the bottom till now, I'm still up like a couple of thousand dollars. So I can't really explain. Uh, sorry, I can't really not explain. I can't really complain. Basically, just hold is my method. I'll simply hold and some coins will never come back and they'll die and they'll be worth nothing. And the other coins will come back and they'll be worth more than they were previously, possibly. Again, that's not a guarantee. But anyway, that's me. That's what I'm looking at. All right, interesting stories. Uniswap 3 comes out tomorrow. So here's some of the things you need to expect. And they've had to do this because they've really been getting kind of smacked around by sushi swap and pancake swap and things like that. So Uniswap version 3 adds concentrated liquidity, better oracles and new free uh, fee tiers. So to stop, you know, the big massive fees that have been coming through. Now the decentralized exchange is competing with trading protocols such as SushiSwap and PancakeSwap for users. And look, Uniswap was kind of it. It, it. it was the one that everyone went to. There really wasn't too many other options. But now there is SushiSwap and PancakeSwap, which have been doing extremely well. SushiSwap's pretty much a fork of Uniswap almost. And PancakeSwap is, you know, the Binance version of sort of Uniswap. And both of these have done pretty well. And Uni's still done well, but geez, it's lost some ground, particularly with those high kind of fees that are, have gone along with it. So tomorrow is going to be the day, you know, how is Uniswap going to do? Is it going to, you know, rocket to the next high or is it, you know, still going to kind of, has it lost too much ground on these uh, other similar platforms already? I don't think they've lost too much, but they could continue to lose more. So we'll keep an eye out for that. All right, so you can now buy a Banksy from uh, Sotheby's with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Like they 
they have sort of shied away from that sort of stuff and been like, no, everything's got to be paid in cash. But now they are happy to accept this. I mean, it's really got to be the buyer as the sorry, the seller as well that's happy to take it. Or you know, Sotheby's could say, yep, yeah, we'll accept the crypto and then we'll exchange it and pass that money on to the person. So I guess that it's got to be a sort of mutual thing. But you know, they haven't done this before. So all of a sudden, some of these big, you know, places, you know, that sell stuff and not just, you know, arts, you know, anything like, you know, we've had cars before, but now we're waiting for property to come on board and all sorts of other things. You know, eBay, they're gonna start accepting cryptocurrencies. That mass adoption really is starting to happen. It's been happening for, you know, probably about a year now at least, but it is starting to pick up some pace. Right, Wall Street Bets founder wants to make stocks more like crypto. So in a Reddit forum, they say they will launch a DAO. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of DAOs out there at the moment, and they're going to have it facilitated by a WSB token. So again, they there's not going to be one person kind of controlling it. Uh, it's going to be a gov, you know, yeah, governed by the public, sort of by the users and things like that. So decentralized would be very, very interesting for Wall Street Bets. Now, Wall Street Bets leaders are trying to launch a decentralized app on a blockchain. Haven't said which blockchain, though, so that'll be interesting. Now, the app will have its own token for voting on stock investments. Wall Street Bets, you know, there was always, not always, but for a while anyway, there's been talk about when these guys would come to crypto. Uh, and it seems like, you know, 2020, 2021 is the year where they're finally going to make it over. Again, they were going to allow... Uh, a forum on Bitcoin, I think Ethereum and Dogecoin. And then only a couple of weeks ago, someone said something that I think, you know, rubbed in the wrong way. And then they said, no, they won't. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're now trying to copy uh, crypto uh, in decentralized forms and things like that. So it'll be interesting to see whether they, again, allow those uh, forums about, you know, cryptocurrencies to now come back because they were coming and then they weren't. And now we're waiting to see whether they're going to allow them or not. And look, they may have, may have been re allowed, and I just don't know about it. But I remember, you know, the last time I heard was that they said, "Not nah, now, we're not getting rid of it," because someone basically, I forget who it was, uh, some company, put out an excuse me an article. It was like Goldman Sachs or someone, and they said Wall Street bets, you know, fold to you know bow to cryptocurrencies or something like that. And they yeah got to be in their bonnet about it. But anyway. Interesting, very, very interesting. Let's move on. Bitcoin stocks crash. All right, so again, this this is what may have had something to do, you know, with a very small piece of this. But again, it's fairly new news, so I'm not sure if it had a whole lot to do with it at all. But Bitcoin stocks crash after Janet Yellen's statements of a possible rise in US interest rates. So ja Janet Yellen... Janet Yellen talked about a potential rise in the United States rates and a quick panic episode dumped the global market. So it's all markets are down. It's not just Bitcoin. Uh, and obviously Bitcoin was included because as much as people like to say that, you know, the markets aren't, you know, kind of linked, every market is. Generally, if a few of the really big markets tank, all of them tank. There's only kind of rare times where something will do something different. They're all kind of integrated. If someone's, you know, particularly like these big companies, they're invested in so many different things that's not funny. And they have a price target, you know, like that they want to keep making. So if one market fails, then they're usually trying to, you know, make those up in another one by selling other things. And then it's just this kind of domino effect and everything just starts to go down. So yeah, if anyone to say that they're, they're not in kind of sync, not completely synced, but somewhat synced, that they are. It's just different times. They're more correlated. That's the word I was looking for and less correlated. But in the end, they are still correlated. Again, you know, the, the big crash that we had in March last year, everything went down. It wasn't like, you know, crypto didn't it went down with everything else so yes there absolutely is correlation and look i always think there will be can there be the odd outlier that doesn't follow suit absolutely god this is unbelievable so the first one thousand two hundred dollar stimulus check over in america if that had been put into dogecoin would now be worth over four hundred thousand dollars. Twelve hundred dollars turns into nearly half a million dollars. That is unbelievable. I'm, yeah, I'm kicking myself. 
I'm kicking myself. Doge, oh, you've... Oh, Doge, you've killed me. <laughs> but look, I made money off Doge, so I can't complain, but I just could have made a whole lot more simply by holding on. Doge, it has now flipped XRP to come the fourth biggest crypto. God, I sincerely hope that there is going to be some some stuff happening on Doge other than just hype. I really do, because otherwise I get a little bit fearful of it. But hey, look, you know, congratulations to all those, you know, people who are holding Doge. They are absolutely killing it at the moment, particularly anyone who's been holding it for year to date. Holy cow. Imagine if you're lucky enough and a year ago, you know, you went, oh, Jesus, I'm going to throw, you know, five or six grand into, you know, Doge or maybe even 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 thousand dollars into Doge. The amount that it'd be worth now. Oh, my God, that is unbelievable. And, I, you know, why couldn't I have been one of them? But anyway, we can't win them all, can we? <laughs> all right, this is very, very troubling, and please watch out for this. So researchers have spotted a new cryptocurrency stealing malware advertised under a subscription model. And look, we go all the way down here, and this is how they're going to do it. In order to steal cryptocurrencies from a victim, uh, West, West, I don't know if it's Wes Teal or Wes Teal, uses regular expressions to look for stir, uh, strings matching the patterns of Bitcoin and Ethereum wallet identifiers being copied to your clipboard. When it matches these, it replaces the copied wallet ID in the clipboard with one supplied by the malware. The victim then pastes, and pastes the substituted wallet ID for a transaction and the funds are, are sent instead to the substitute wallet. So please confirm before you hit send, make sure it's the same address. And if it's not, you know, I don't know how you're gonna fix it in all fairness, because there is some stuff saying that, you know, it's getting past, um, what is it, uh, virus wear and all the rest of it. But number one, don't do it from that computer. Go, all right, cancel, and you're gonna have to go find another computer uh, to do it on. So yes, please keep an eye out for that, or otherwise you're gonna be sending your crypto to somewhere completely different. And it only takes a couple of seconds to have a look, uh, and you'll generally pick up the differences pretty quick. And if it's different, just don't hit send, and again, go find another computer to use. So please beware. Venezuela. Their minimum wage has gone to three dollars. Wow, that is unbelievable. That's unbelievably low, is what I mean. So the president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, approved a minimum wage uh, increase last week that took it to the three dollars monthly, a very low income for the citizens of the country that are facing a strong economic crisis since 2013. This has been nearly a decade. However, the crypto environment has been growing and now Venezuelans are flocking to exchanges like Binance and local Bitcoins, platforms that are now serving thousands of Venezuelan users monthly with their peer-to-peer -peer offerings uh, destined to preserve the value of their money. And that is the problems for, problem for places like Venezuela and that their money just continues to go down and is worth absolutely nothing. So why would you hold it? They've been forced like literally forced into getting into cryptocurrencies. And, you know, my personal opinion is that's a good thing for them. But, you know, maybe some of them didn't like crypto, but were just forced into it anyway. And again, if there's a big crypto market turnaround, then they would lose money again. So this is the things I worry about. It's, you know, the people who are really just disadvantaged financially in general that, you know, have real hard times trying to increase their wealth. No matter what happens, they really need to have something really lucky happen to them to get out of the places they are. I believe crypto can help that, but it's all dependent on when they're getting in. Again, you know, these people, they've only got, you know, $5 in total uh, that they want to invest and they get into, you know, any cryptocurrency, it doesn't matter what it is, right at the peak and it loses, you know, 70, 80, 90% of its value, you know, you're taking pretty much everything away from people who really had nothing in the first place. So that is some of the pitfalls of crypto at the moment. Again, I think it will stabilize in the future and it should always continue to go up because of its limited supply. But yeah, we just we need to think about some of the people around the world sometimes and understand the really hard situations that they're in. And yeah, all right. Hopefully things work out well for them. And look, a wage increase is good, but it's not good if 
the money that they're getting paid in is going down more than the increase, then it hasn't helped them at all. And again, hopefully Bitcoin and you know cryptocurrencies and things like that in general can help them out. All right. Crypto community remembers Hal Finney's contributions to blockchain on his 65th birthday. So there's been a lot of talk out there that people think Hal Finney was Bitcoin, whether he was, uh, sorry, was Satoshi Nakamoto uh, by himself or whether he was just part of it. Because he was one of the first people to ever mine uh, some Bitcoin and I think he had some sent to him as well. So the cypherpunk was one of the first people besides Satoshi Nakamoto to mine Bitcoin blocks and reported many of the early bugs. So again, you know, he, it'd be interesting that he would build something and then report bugs back to himself. So that's what makes me think, I don't know if he was Satoshi Nakamoto, at least by himself, he may well have been part of a group that formed Satoshi Nakamoto uh, Satoshi Nakamoto and, and you know brought Bitcoin to us now tragically how Finney died uh, back in 2014 so that is really really sad but you know happy birthday how Finney to wherever you are you know if you believe in heaven and he's in heaven and all the rest of it and I hope that you know that is the case and he's up there and knows that you know people are still thinking of him and you know are really you know proud of what he did to build this system that looks like it'll be part of the future you know of the financial system going forwards all right DeFi may lead to a paradigm shift says federal bank reserve paper i i think it absolutely will again personal opinion only now a paper published by the federal reserve bank of st louis has delved into the expansion of decentralized finance and ethereum's role in it the research penned by Dr. Fabian Shahar, hopefully I said that right, and published on May the 2nd has taken a deep dive into the world of DeFi, hinting that if security concerns and risks, and these are the big problems, a lot of you know, rug pulls and you know, exploits and things like that are happening, if they can be addressed, it may lead to huge changes in the financial industry. And again, if you're in the right projects, you know, probably going to make a fair bit of coin at some stage <laughs> that's all i'm saying again not financial advice now DeFi may lead to a paradigm shift in the financial industry and potentially contribute to a more to contribute towards i think that should be a more robust open and transparent financial infrastructure and that's what we want we need it to be transparent not all these dodgy deals being done behind doors that you know no one ever knows about until uh you know some kind of inquest is done it should all be there for everyone to see uh, so we know exactly where the money's going and no one can be you know pulling dodgy stuff and look blockchain is ripe for that not pulling dodgy stuff although there's dodgy stuff that can be pulled on it but just for changing the way things are and everything being transparent right there in front of us and you know hopefully leading towards you know just less scams and again you know less people you know getting away with crimes and all the rest of it because it should be there for everyone to see and be picked up really really quickly all right last but not least 40 percent of people intend to use crypto for payments next year mastercard survey says now this is a lot of this is millennials they are big on crypto with 77 percent wanting to learn more look and that's the thing that you know some of these older people you know like uh berkshire half Hathaway you know all that kind of stuff they just don't get it they think you know it's a big scam it's this and that and rah rah and they wish it would go away it's not going away and the younger generation they're just flocking to it unfortunately this happens with a lot of people as you get older you just become resistant to change now not all old people but it's just a it's a very generalization but yeah as people get older, they generally don't like change too much, and so they just stick to what they know, and that's fine. But you know, to call things scams and they wish it to go away is they are saying that because they simply don't understand it, don't get it, and they, you know, at least those two guys, I forget what uh, Warren Buffett's mate's name is, uh, but he's basically as old as Warren Buffett. They just don't want to learn, they're not interested in learning anything new. All right, a lot of news out there, and like I said, I'm just watching out for this. For, you know, at the moment, Bitcoin could just continue to travel sideways for you know a lot longer, a lot longer. It could you know stretch out for another month or two or more, and that's going to be great for altcoins. 
But if Bitcoin does start to fall down into here, and particularly if it goes lower, really under the 100 day moving average, if we get a close under the 100 day moving average, I think you're going to see you know, a downturn in the market a little bit. And if Bitcoin falls into here, I think altcoins are just going to bleed really, really hard. That's my personal opinion. So if you, you know, if you haven't taken some profits, consider taking some is all I'm saying, because that might not happen. We may find the 100 day moving average again. And that is it. We're off to the races, you know, to the next all time high, whatever it may be. But I am watching out for what happens if that doesn't happen. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another, hopefully roll on that gain train at the moment. Things were looking pretty good, and I'll see you next time.